Hello indie game fans, November does appear to be front loaded with many of the indie games that I'm looking forward to, which I suppose is par for the course for this time of year since things generally do wind down towards the winter holidays. However, before we get there, we still have a number of promising indie games with some developers not getting the memo that Halloween is over and are still releasing horror games, so see what's coming up in this edition of Indie Gaming this week. Let's begin with Soma Union, a pixel art turn-based JRPG that looks pretty good, coming to us from a developer that has history with this genre. It's an SNES-style title where you play as spirits on a galaxy-spanning adventure, trying to pick up the pieces after your planet was destroyed in the original game from 2017. As you may know, I have a soft spot for this genre since I grew up with the classics, where all of the games from this developer are free on Steam, so please check it out and show them some support. I've mentioned Akos in a recent video on first-person shooters where this pixel art entry does appear to be paying tribute to Hexen and Heretic rather than Doom. It's a good-looking title that uses voxels, but the motion blurring is a little excessive and I do hope there's the option to turn it down a little. You're venturing into the dungeon to track down a powerful weapon once owned by your former teacher who just so happens to have gone missing many years ago. But as with most 90s inspired shooters, the story should not be the main motivator here. Rather, the action looks fantastic but I do wonder how the variety in weapons will add to the combat. I'm not the biggest fan of the original trailer for Recipe for Disaster since it is purely cinematic and does not show off the gameplay so I've taken the extra effort to spice in some footage so I do hope you enjoy. This is a restaurant management and tycoon game having you manage both the macro and micro level in getting the furniture and decorations down to manually assigning various tasks for each individual staff member using a highly customizable priority system. Big fan of this developer as well who were there with me when I started this YouTube journey so do show them some love. Unpacking is a chill pixel art title about unpacking the belongings of the in-game character, being relatively low stakes since there are no meters, points and such, looking like a decoration game on the surface. However, the developers do talk about telling a story through this mechanic, where you're able to pick up clues on what is happening with the character based on the items carried from one move to the next as well as items left behind. If you're at that stage in your life, whether you're moving into or out of college, a bigger house because you have kids, to another country or state for a new job and so on, I'm sure that you'll be able to identify with this game making this of interest. The demon world is inhabited by all kinds of gnats. Separated into turfs and their gangs. None stand a chance to the demon king himself. I say it's time to kick his sorry butt out of here! A no-brainer pick for the week is Demon Turf, a 3D platformer that uses 2D characters in a 3D environment, giving it quite a unique look. You play as a young demon with ambitions of becoming the Demon Queen, having to travel through hell to defeat the various Demon Turf leaders, Accomplished, of course, through exploration, platforming, and boss fights. What the heck is wrong with 
you. But I told you I'd do it. I always got your back, Dee. You and me, the dream team. The early feedback from its speedrunning focus demo has been very positive, with the way this game controls and being an entry in a relatively niche genre makes this something different. Welcome to the 13th season of Hell's Dream. 50 lucky contestants compete for a chance to win $10 million. Your task is to survive by whatever means necessary. It's showtime! Correct me if I'm wrong, but I do think that full motion video or FMV games can be quite an expensive production since you do need to get actors and a filming crew together, which means a whole bunch of people and studios involved, but the bigger game of the week is Blood Shore, one that uses the premise of a battle royale survival TV show like the Stone Cold Steve Austin classic The Condemned, where you control the fate of one such individual, looking to be a good crossover between a classic type of game and the current zeitgeist. I love it! Toodles, bitch. Got what a loser! Do you think this is a game? It's real! No one believes in God anymore. This is the new church. This is what the people want. They keep watching. It doesn't have to end like this. You still have a choice. 50 contestants! The ultimate prize! One winner! Come on! Are you ready? You can have it all! Smaller Games kicks off with Circa Infinity, a trippy platformer from 2015 getting Switch and Xbox versions this week. For the best part of my later years, I worked as a private investigator. But in 1954, something terrible happened that I could not avoid. The abduction of young Charlotte May. And overnight, everyone became a suspect. Developer White Paper Games are known for their cerebral adventure games, the most famous example of which is The Occupation from 2019, with their next game being the detective mystery title Conway Disappearance at Dahlia View that looks pretty good. She was the kidnapper. You asked me to lie to the police. To your daughter, no less. Not everyone in Dahlia View is as they seem. Mr. Conway. How could the kidnapper have come to be in the possession of a key? You keep this kind of thing up, you're gonna end up hurt. Or worse. Where is my daughter, Mr. Conway? I could feel it again. That drive. That first pull of the yard. She'd been missing for days. The police were getting nowhere. Someone needed to do what had to be done. No matter the cost.
If you thought that Docs Organized Neatly looked familiar, that is because this is from the same developer as Cats Organized Neatly from last year, being a similar type of puzzle game, which, granted, is very derivative but does look very cute. Developer Euphoric Brothers have a very peculiar art style, which is very suited for horror games, where Flesh Water has a self-explanatory trailer, so enjoy. I know this sounds crazy, but I'm gonna miss what we do. It's sad what the years did to this place. Now, the only thing that swims here is a creature that eats corpses. And we're the ones feeding it. One of the more impressive looking action titles of the week is Giants Uprising. One where you play as such a creature who breaks free from enslavement, having to take revenge on the cruel humans by smashing everything in sight. I'm not sure if there's supposed to be some sort of homonym pun in the title, but Not Longa is a creepy horror adventure game with some disturbing designs looking like it's for fans of the genre. My next pick for a first person simulator that gets weirdly popular is Prison Simulator, where you play as a guard in this freeform simulation game. If you love giant robots, Project Mikael will be the title to get, being an action title where you're using various skills in your customizable mech that looks pretty decent.
The next title to enter the fray in the cozy, chill city builder space is Sky Tail, one where you're placing various towers and buildings, expanding out the map, and simply looks very pleasant. This is an interesting one since The Binding of Isaac, Repentance, is the latest DLC for the insanely popular action roguelite, releasing on Steam in March, and is now coming to Xbox, where I thought that it would have been Switch first, or at the very least, a simultaneous launch on all consoles. job to do. I'm counting on you. Time transfer complete. Successfully arrived in 1995. Now we have a screwdriver. An interesting looking puzzle platformer is Time Loader, where you send a robot arm on wheels back in time, having to explore and solve puzzles with a very important role to play in altering the course of history. But I do love the household setting that allows you to see things from a different perspective. Why does it look so deserted? What's happened here? There are a couple of interesting tycoon games this week, the first of which is Tawny, one where you're not building a zoo or a hospital, but rather a medieval tournament instead. As such, this is so unique and different, where you have to build the various tents for vendors, stables for horses, and even the jousting arena and seats for the spectators, certainly being of interest to fans of the genre. A great looking action roguelite that I could have sworn was already released is Usurper Soulbound. Probably not helped by the fact that the name is a little generic, but it does look like a pretty decent entry where you play as a spirit who can possess the bodies of your enemies, where, if done right, could potentially be very interesting. turn-based battles. Assassinate your enemies. Exploit the enemy's weaknesses. Use over 140 abilities. Thank you. 
develop a reputation. Rounding off the smaller games is another interesting mixture of genres in Void Eclipse, one that has a turn-based tactics portion with cards, so that means deck building elements, which is in service of a larger grand strategy 4X title, looking like quite the cerebral entry. Unlock 14 unique units. Let's kick off the top 5 with To The Rescue, a game which I covered in my video previewing the best indie games of the month, where this dock shelter simulator tycoon game simply looks wonderful. As expected, you are trying to take care of these canine friends as best you can while waiting for them to get adopted, having a wonderful theme and sure seems cozy. A portion of the profits from this game will go to a real-life charity as well, so it seems like a feel-good title all around. After a short and unexpected delay, the stylish looking action platformer The Legend of Tianting should be launching today, where I've covered this title quite a number of times and will not belabor the point. However, if it is new to you, the short version is that you play as a Taiwanese folk hero that has been compared to Robin Hood, having to battle against corrupt officials and criminals, all with fantastic action and a wonderful cell shaded art style. Another delayed title makes it to launch with the roguelite 2D brawler Tunche, one where you play as guardians of the forest, having to battle evil and to restore peace to the Amazon rainforest. The character designs and settings, aside from Head Kit, are inspired by Central and South American culture, where this developer is Peruvian and showcases their own heritage. I like the look of the action, with what appears to be an extensive skill tree and various combo options simply looking pretty good. This next title will be familiar to fans of the channel as well, since Let's Build a Zoo is a tycoon game we are doing exactly that, coming to my attention for a couple of reasons. 
Firstly, it is from a studio based out of my home country of Singapore, has a publisher in No More Robots, who have a fantastic catalogue under their belt, and is a game with fantastic pixel art as well. However, in addition to the expected elements, the breeding system here is super weird since you can splice different animals together, and there even is a morality counter since you could quite literally be running a slaughterhouse instead of a zoo, making it quite the intriguing prospect. He's fast, fearless, has special abilities, and sticks to the wall with his tongue? A very nice surprise for me is Super Mumbo Quest, a metroidvania with an arcadey twist that is another fantastic pixel art entry. I love this genre, and while many of the great games do have a combat focus like Hollow Knight or Bloodstained Ritual of the Night, this game does look to be more focused on jumping on enemies, hits, Mario style, with a collectathon element for the upgrade gems as well. There are multiple forms that you can unlock, which grant you access to new areas in this interconnected world, so I definitely think that it counts as a metroidvania, with some of the pixel art backgrounds and skyscapes looking absolutely amazing as well. As such, it looks like another dark horse contender in the making, taking the number one spot. For more Metroidvania games, watch these videos and I will see you after the jump.